Okay, before we move on to this well cared for babied pro saw, um, we're gonna take another peek at this 461 from the other day and uh, see how much wear we had on the piston skirt from ingesting some of that dirt. And then we'll take a look at the internals. Um, this particular company ran ultra for quite some time until I got them at least switched over and they run the uh, original steel orange bottle at 50 to one. So uh, we'll actually be able to take a peek inside and uh, see how things have cleaned up. So sit tight, here we go. Okay, I took a minute to take this 461 we worked on just the other day to uh, do a little pre tear down on this. Uh, all I've done is take the carburetor. Um, I took the muffler cover off, but I haven't. Uh, really can't get a good view of that, but we'll uh, pull the jug on this and see uh, what kind of wear we ended up with internally by leaving your air filter untouched, unchecked for an extended period of time beating and banging on it, misshaping that rubber base that makes the good seal that you need. dirt down in there. There we go. Starting to leak a little bit of fuel. Let's get that capped off before we go any farther. Make a huge mess. So And again, like I said, you know, these guys use Ultra for quite some time. Yeah, that looks about right. And now use the uh, traditional orange bottle just for cakes and Snickers. Let's uh, take a look at this. Make sure we got good color in here. And oh, hell. They switch back to pond water. Ha <laughs> ha. You big dummies. So there you have it. Well, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't drown him. Now I will say, I don't look too terribly bad. It's awful wet in here. Let's um, tidy this up just a little bit before I get you in. So I don't know if this had, I have not started it after I uh, did all the wear part replacements on here, but it's a, well, let's see. Let's back up a little bit. Here's the plug that came out of there. She's like that. And if I'm not mistaken, no, limiter cat's been removed on this. But, let's see if we can get a good view. And if you look up here, you'll see where those machining rings were and how little bit of evidence there is. Let me run my thumb across here and kind of clean this up a little bit. Uh, 
Now those scratches are awful light. Can I feel anything? Nah. So there's wear. And then let's look at you know, and that that crud right there is just from pulling the top in. We'll flush the uh, case with some gas and some compressed air. But there seems to be a good film, oil film in here. No nasty discoloration. And we've got nice machining rings there and no machining rings there. Let's get that cleaned off, get you in there. Well, they're awful faint. And then you see that traditional coking where the Ultra just doesn't have the detergent package to keep this burning squeaky clean. Uh, there's a muffler. Screen's good. You know, I promise you, you know, this thing gets run hard. You can tell by the condition of it. Let's see what the cylinder looks like. Uh, let me grab a little, little, little bit of light. Come on, focus. Looks good, I don't see any wear. Let's see, there's your plating. Let's see if I can just turn this and get a little bit better angle. And prop it up against something. Now, with the light reflecting off of it, it's gonna look worse like this than it does in person. I can feel some very, very slight ridges in there. Like not scoring necessarily, but wear. And you'll see right there at your intake port, as that dirt's being ingested, it's being sandwiched in between this hardened Nicosil layer, chrome layer, whichever it is it still uses, and the intake of the, per the piston. Piston's going to be your sacrificial material in this, but that doesn't mean that, that dirt and debris doesn't affect plating a little bit. So let's get some, some measurements on this piston and see where we need to be, okay? Let me set you down for a minute. Okay, I know this isn't 100% apples to apples, but I've got a Meteor piston here, brand hammer new, never been used. And these are very, very tight tolerance to OEM. I mean, they do, the Italians do a super job machining these. So I've taken a measurement here at the crown of the piston. I'm at two inches and 36 and a half, 36 thousandths. Yeah, 36 and a half. And on our used piston, we're at uh, 36 thousandths. So maybe a half thou of wear on the top. And then down here, we're at, and this is kind of tough to get that, that reading and be nice and square. I'm gonna put the backside of these calipers on the pin boss just to get me square and I'm at 42 thousandths down there towards the base of the piston and same measurement here down at the base of the pin boss I'm at 42 and a half 43 thousandths so even though we've lost a whisper of material due to the dirt ingestion. You know, I don't see, I mean, the crank rotates smooth. I did this off camera, but you know, again, here's another typical symptom of, of ultra. You know, I don't know if this was hard to start earlier. Um, and that's why the plug's so wet. Uh, I do have one other thing I want to share with y'all, and I know I've mentioned it in a handful. 
But if you're ever going to change out your fuel filter, you wanna make sure your tank is clean. You wanna look down in there. I think I've been in here recently because that's a late model filter. And when I say recently, you know, in the last few months, um, certainly I wouldn't have missed all the wear parts, but you know, these things get beat on pretty hard. But whenever you put a new fuel filter on, dump your tank and use a little bit of compressed air. Get your tank all nice and clean. So that way, when you put that brand new filter in, it's not working double time to pick up all your particulate, you know, and it doesn't matter what brand you run. Every time you take the cap on and off, you're going to get a couple of crumbs in the tank. Same goes for your oil. Um, but it's probably more important here um, that uh, you get the tank good and clean before you go throw in a new fuel, fuel filter in. All right, that's what I use. I just wrap this is some 320 and uh, I knocked a little bit of the ugly off of the cylinder, hit it with some red scotch bright and got that tidied up. You can still see some of the 320. So I've got some texture there. Uh, here's our exhaust port and a little bit of build up here and there, nothing crazy. Uh, I guess it's not the end of the world if you run ultra, but you know, you know, we go over this over and over and over again and you just need a more modern oil. You know, you look at, pardon the Christmas tree, I promise it's coming down. You look at the Echo lineup, you know, the Japanese are serious about this. Even their cheapest oil they make, their end of the uh, bottom of the barrel, you know, low smoke that they hand out with homeowner weed eaters and stuff like that is FD rated. That means it's got the detergent package in it. Plus, you know, exceptional, you know, here's their power blend gold, FD rated. Husky even went and reformulated their traditional XP, keep up with the times, and it's FD rated. Ugh. Yeah, Ultra's the best, Ultra's the best. Where's that? There it is, Jasso FB. You know, you, I even asked, and, and I've gone over this in some other oil videos. It, uh, you know, if you're still to always try and be, you know, out in front of everything, I don't know why they're running a 15-year-old oil formula, but, you know, hey, I just work on shit. What do I know? All right, uh, I'm going to get all this tidied up and sealed up, put back together. I am going to run it and test it before I hand it back to the guys, but I've got to get a handful of other saws put together. Um, so they can be ready to go on Monday. So thanks for sticking around with me. If you enjoyed this, then throw me a like. That's all I ask. You don't have to subscribe. I don't care. I'm not, you know, but, uh, just a like will go a long way. So anyway, thanks y'all. Have a great day. One last thing. I forgot. I actually have a project 461 in a box. So there's your piston for a 461 and there's my little steel logo up here. And you can always tell a 461 piston by that little cutout right there. Anyway, so I got my calipers back out. And uh, let's see where we're at. Just to show if the, that the meteor is... Uh, oh, come on. There's enough. There we go. So we're at 42, 42 and a half. Uh, so that the meteor piston is indeed a great OEM replacement, just uh, in case anybody wants to throw out there that that's not an apples to apples comparison when we're micing down the piston to check for wear. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. Y'all have a super sparkly day.